Hi. I actually didn't know we were live. <laughs> Garrett's just dived right in there. <laughs> Great way to start Monday morning. Okay. I've, uh, I've already started my little DIY project here. It's a little fun and um, obviously it's going to get messy and it's going to get a little loud. So I thought that I would share with you first um, how I actually currently store my hats and headbands. And it's in a bit of really because I need this more than anybody else right now, this entire little crafting session. Because right now, this is how I store my headbands. <laughs> so when I am looking for a headband, I have to go through this. This is a task I have been putting off for so long. And I can't tell you how frustrated I get every time I come to this basket. And, and I say every time, I need to do something about this. And I haven't. And I... And I I keep putting it off because I know that it's one of those tasks that um, is going to take me some time to create the right storage, I suppose, for me that's going to work. And this is, I have two of these baskets, they're exactly the same. These are my hat baskets, so when I am looking for a hat, this is what I do. <laughs> when I was working out of my home studio, I had these all beautifully hung on the wall. I had them clamped up with all of these beautiful little silver clips on, on wire and it looked amazing, it was all colour coded. And then when we moved into this new space, I didn't want to use the walls to hang things on because uh, you know, I needed an area for my storage over here and then I had my walls of windows on this side and then I needed my walls for my backdrops. And I've often thought I could hang all of these behind my backdrops, but I occasionally need a white wall. So I was sort of always torn as to how to do it. And then we put cupboards on the, on the shelves so that when we, you know, other people come into the space, it's not always, um, you know, open and, and visible. They can't always see all of my things. So coming up with the right storage for me was always going to be a little bit tricky. So I thought, why not use this time to actually create something that is going to work. So we're going to have some fun. I've kind of crafted up with some stuff that I just had laying around. And this is the beautiful thing about it. You don't have to go out and spend, you know, a whole heap of money on things that, um, you know, that isn't necessary. You can use lots of bits and pieces that you've got around the house and obviously do it in a way that's not going to cost you an arm and a leg. So anyway, good morning. I kind of kicked that off and hit the ground running. I didn't really, um, someone has said your storage is as bad as mine. <laughs> it is Lisa Marie. Oh, yes. And it is, it's one of those things, like I said, I just keep putting off. So I'm like, what can I use that I've got here? And I've gone around the studio and around my house and sort of scavenged for bits and pieces that I'm going to make work and this is going to be amazing. I've got a very handy husband with, with tools. He owns every tool that you could possibly think of but I'm also pretty handy so that's why he's not in here because he's probably thinking, oh, she can do it <laughs> and he's got other things to do. So let me know where you're watching from, where you're tuning in from. I hope you all had a nice weekend with your families and and uh, got, some, got some things done. I see some people are sharing lots of things in the group that they've been making, crafting. We had a beautiful little outfit made out of a, an old green jumper, which was beautiful. So make sure you take the time to scroll through the group, go to the discussions tab on the side or at the top and see everyone's posts and what they're sharing. It could give you a little inspiration and it could motivate you to start sort of crafting as well. All right, I had already started here because it's a little loud with the banging and I'm pretty sure you guys don't want to hear the, uh, the banging that I'm going to create. But what I want to show you to start with is I have some, I suppose what you call these is dowel, but just some um, round wooden sort of poles and they're like broomsticks. So if you've got an old broom and you've got a saw, cut it off, use a little bit of sandpaper to, um, to sand the edges and make sure that that's not... Um, not obviously going to create any splinters and things like that, especially if you are hanging hats and headbands on things like that because if you happen to get a splinter in something that's going to go on a baby's head, that could potentially be end not so great for you. And the baby, um, just got my little bit of sandpaper there that's rolled off. 
So what I've done is I'm going to unclamp it here and not always do you have a spare set of hands so these multi-purpose grips are perfect. Raid your husband's tool shed. All right, so I want to hang this in a way and the, what, what I've done is I've drilled two holes in either end and I've got my, my string, my Hessian string, and I've tied some knots there through the end. And then I've come along with a ruler and I've marked where I want to hammer in my, my, um, my nails. And you can see if I turn it on the side there, which camera are we on right now? So if it's hanging like that, or you could screw this into, into a wall or something, but if you don't want to and you, don't, you can't screw things into walls, wherever you are, if you're leasing a space and you, know, you don't want to put holes in things, you can use those, um, uh, what do you call them? Those hooks, 3M hooks. 3M hooks that you can stick onto the walls. They work great. Okay, so then with the hooks, the nails, I've hammered them in on an angle so that when I go to hang a little tie on here and I haven't tied that up neatly but when I go to hang a tie on here you know they're not going to fall off um, because it's slightly coming upwards so if they were downwards you know obviously they're going to fall off so I've got them hammered in on a way in a way sorry that they're not going to fall off so with this and if I come over to my cupboard I've just put a screw on the inside of my cupboard here where I can just hang that but again, you could use a 3M hook or you could use multiple ones and put one over here and one over here, depending on how stable you want to make it. And you can hang your little headbands along like that and they're definitely not going to fall off. So I'll show you how I kind of created the plan to do that with that little bit of, um, little bit of wood with this one here. So I did get Rob to cut these with the saw because I'm not that great with a saw, but I'm just going to get rid of that little splinter right there and smooth that edge out. I've got a few things here we're going to go through. So lots of people join us. Nashville, oh, fantastic. Africa, Houston, Texas. Good morning, everyone, or good evening, wherever you are. Gold I hope. Coast. Hope you're all staying, staying healthy, staying home, staying safe. And using this time with your, with your families. You know what else you can do with these is paint them. All right. So I've got my, my holes that have been drilled there. And I'm just going to grab one of these little hooks. Can't get that off, Garrett. It's put tight, shut. <laughs> well, Garrett's. The locks on it. Okay, while Garrett's doing that, I'm just going to grab some string. I'll cut that off. Now, when I'm feeding it through here, this type of string is a bit of a pain. You can see it's actually quite hard to get that through there. So a neat little trick is to use some wax or a little bit of hot glue. So I'm just rolling it there on that bit of paper, that hot glue, and sort of smudging it in there. Let that cool down a bit, you don't want to burn yourself. And I'll do the other end as well. So that's going to make it nice and easy to thread. Just roll it around in that hot glue. Hot glue guns are the best, aren't they? Okay. So I've only pulled the one. If you wanted to make a bow out of it and put a bit of ribbon on it or something like that, you could. But um, obviously... Oh, thank you, Garrett. I haven't quite gone through there yet. Whenever you are making something for the studio, you've got to be so careful and think of all the potential sort of safety hazards. So if something wasn't so secure, you've got to look at it and go, right, how can I secure this better? So I've got my string through there. And then you just have to determine 
how high you want that to hang from the top to where you tie your knots. So what I do when I'm tying knots to make sure that it doesn't come back through and fall is I just continually sort of tie over the same knotted area. I always feel like I'm in such a rush when we're doing this live. <laughs> No, and no one wants you to be in a rush. That's the, that's the weird thing. All right. Okay, so there's no crazy dogs and teenagers today. For those of you who joined me on Friday for my live, I, and it was lots of fun. There was a little, many a very unscripted moments. <laughs> we did have a good laugh, though. And uh, for those of you that didn't see it, I photographed my, my two teenage twins. Mackenzie and Alex, they were good sports, and um, and we had the dogs in the studio as well, Ali and Rocky. And Rocky's not quite one, and uh, he he got a little excited, to say the least. <laughs> and I literally could not move for laughter to even prevent what was happening, but. Um, Anyway, it's still here in the group if you want to go and watch it. I am going to share the photos that I took of the twins. I've already gone through them. And after we finished the live, believe it or not, I am managed to get one of my all-time favourite photos. And it's of the twins and Rocky together. And I absolutely adore it. So I need to share that with you as well. I just haven't had time. Um, Believe it or not, even in you know this lockdown period, <laughs> I've been really busy. Okay, so now to get the clamps right, to know exactly where I want to put the nails, or even if you wanted to hot glue the little wooden pegs, and you can buy these. This is two packets, and they were seriously $2 a packet. Um, I can't quite remember how many were in a packet, but that's how many I got. And just little wooden pegs, and you could hot glue those along here as well to sort of clamp some things on. I think that'd look really great. So we might even try that and then I'll show you what I did with the pin, with the um, with the nails. So instead of having it sort of 90 degrees, so if I come along here and I hammer straight down, I want to kind of roll it back a little bit more towards me so that when I'm hammering down they're going to come up on that slight incline. So now if I grab my clamps Oh God, Kelly, get it right. You got this. Okay, clamp that down there. But Brittany's just asked, did you manage to get a photo of your puppies? Not together, no. Ali, do you know it's funny right now? Ali was always our very spoilt baby. And since Rocky's come along, it's almost like his nose has just completely been put out of joint. Um, do you know I'm silly? So he doesn't want to stay in the same space as Rocky for too long because Rocky just wants to play and bite and, and muck around. And yeah, it's not, not so much fun for poor old Ali. So anyway, I've cut these pieces 40 centimetres long. So if I come to 40 centimetres here, what I'm going to do, get that out of the way, is I'm going to come in. Let's go this way actually so I can get it up a bit higher. I'm going to come in 20 centimetres from the edge so I've got the centre of my timber. And then sort of in the middle, just gauging in the middle, I've got my metal ruler. What I'm going to do is work my way along here every two centimetres. And just pop a little mark. And then with my nails, obviously you've got to be very careful. You don't want to nail your finger. So now I'll pop this back in. Okay. 
you want to try and get them at the same height. This is going to be a bit loud, I'm sorry, so you might want to turn the volume down. But you want to try and nail them all in consistently at the same height and at the same angle. And then obviously making sure that you've got them in there and they're not going to move if you try to pull them out. Okay, so yeah, I would just come along and have a look then at the height and then continue to work my way along. But if I wanted to put any of the little wooden hooks on here, these would be great for something that's a bit more flat. So let's unclamp this one because I, I don't want to put you through that whole hammering process but you can see that we've done half of this one and you could just continue to work your way along. And what I love about this kind of stuff is you could paint that. You could get some spray paint or some paint and paint your, your nails, your, your timber and make that look really pretty. Alrighty, so with this one here, with the little pegs being flat, I've gone 40 centimetres um, in length again because that's the perfect width for my cupboard. So you'd have to measure up uh, where you're thinking about storing all of your different sort of, you know, bits and pieces, your hats, your headbands, and make sure that whatever you are sort of, you know, creating is going to fit perfectly into that space. So if we come back over here and I pop some headbands on this just to kind of show you couple that are already tied. And obviously you could tie them up really neat and have it on display beautifully. But just to kind of show you, pop your headbands on inside the cupboard. Now when I've got the, the, them in there and I close those doors, I want to make sure obviously that they're not going to come into contact with anything else that's in there. So you've got to think about how far they're going to stick out um, where you are putting them, so making something that is going to work with your current storage right now and your space. So obviously that, you know, little kids aren't going to be able to reach up and grab things like that, toddlers in the studio as well, but having them on the inside is going to make those nice and secure. So just when you do sort of make something like that, think of all the different possibilities. But the 3M hooks, if you were to put, you know, two of those up there and have them, that hanging over there, that's not going to go anywhere and it's going to look really great. But that was just to show you sort of a rough idea. And I know that when I shut my cupboard, it's not going to come into contact with anything else. Alrighty. So let's unclamp this one. Because I'm going to make two of these, not live. I'll show you finished products and I'll be able to hang them sort of, you know, one under the other as well. And that should get all of my headbands out of that tangled, tangled mess, that pile. But this one here with the, um, the, little, the little pegs is going to work really well too. So I kind of wanted to show you what I was going to do there. I could potentially screw this in somewhere and, um, and you could make something. Like you could get really crafty depending on how you know, what you wanted to make. <laughs> no one is in a rush, we're all in isolation. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Did you mean, oh, okay, I saw that one. Anybody else got any questions before I move on? No, if you do, pop them into the comments. I love chatting, um, as you can tell. All right, so with, um, with this bit of wood, if I'm gonna start in the middle again, so obviously I've gone 40 centimeters. So I would again think about the distance that I wanna put my little pegs. So if I think, if I put them one centimetre apart, is that going to work or are they going to be too close together? So you can see how close they are at one centimetre, which is why I've gone two centimetres. So with something like this, um, I would then have a look, I would draw a straight line, measure the width here. So what do we got? Let's come down, I reckon, how big are these? go three centimeters so we get them all in the same line and with this one I plan to paint it white to make it um, look nice inside my cupboards there 
so I'm not too concerned about drawing that line there. So then I just come across the line and every two centimetres just make a little, little mark. Won't go so close down there. Okay. And then with my hot glue gun, try not to burn myself. These little pegs are so cute. You can get different size ones from your little crafting stores. Ikea is a fantastic place to get lots of things from as well when you are looking at storage and it is always very very affordable and I know that they deliver too so if you are kind of wanting to get I'm just going through these pegs and I'm picking the best ones make sure that they um, they're going to work you know if you can sort of afford to sort of spend that time and money on updating a few of your little storage things you can get a few bits and pieces really quite cheap from there too like I've got these little racks here with some clamps on them which we'll get to in a minute and you know what if you guys have created some great DIY storage things I'd love for you to share them um, in the group take some photos and again those photos can be used for your social media in terms of creating content to share on your pages whilst you're not photographing clients. How are we all going? Very good. It's, it's quiet in the house today. Very quiet in the house for Monday. It is. It is. I know there's some very handy people in my group. You know, I'm a bit of a a shortcut crafter. Shortcut. <laughs> I just made that up. A little word for dodgy. Yep. A little bit, a little bit sometimes. Is dodgy a word um, where everybody else comes from? Oh yeah, does everyone know what the word dodgy is? We often say a lot of words here that I know most people will kind of go, what are they talking about? As long as we don't go down the avenues of bed, then I think we'll be that one's not, not a goer. Fair dinkum. Do you know my pop used to always say struth. Struth. <laughs> Last night, or today actually, is my mother's birthday. Is my mother watching? Uh, she must be busy. Wrong, yeah? She must be very busy today. Well, it is Susan Sawyer's birthday today, so for those of you that have met my mum or, you know, follow her little, little Sue's Little Pieces page, it's called, where she makes all of her, you know, her little knit, knitted items and outfits that she sells for baby photographers. Wish, make sure you wish her a happy birthday today. That would make her feel very loved. But last night we did a family dinner via Zoom. <laughs> And we had six of us all tune in from different locations whilst we had dinner and I can tell you I have not laughed so hard in a long time. Not even on Friday afternoon or morning. Emma Baker says dodgy is perfect. Perfect. Yep. She's, she's an Aussie though. <laughs> <laughs> hey Emma. <laughs> all right, look at this. This is coming up really good. So yeah. I've got some other stuff over here that I'm keen to show you, so I'm going to do this a little faster. This is where I need one of my teenagers in here assisting me. That's what they do on talk shows. 
They get a guest on and then the guests have to finish it off while they move along. I'd love to have a guest in here. Do you know what we're going to do? And I'm going to do a little announcement here today. I am going to, and I'm going to share it this afternoon. So I'll do a post as well. But I'm going to go live again this afternoon at about 4 o'clock Australian Eastern Standard Time. So right now it's, my watch is telling me to breathe, it's 11 a.m. Um, but I'm going to give away an online mentoring session to someone in our group. Because do you know what? I've received so many beautiful emails. I haven't had the opportunity to get back to everyone, but for those of you who have sent us emails, thanking us for the lives that we're doing, you know, just your kindness and the fact that you took the time to email us, I can tell you it really does mean a lot to every single person that's a part of this team. You know, Rob, Michelle, Garrett and myself um, and Chanel, we're all extremely appreciative. And we love doing this. And like I've said before, it keeps us motivated. It keeps us going. So I'm going to give away a mentoring session. And I'm going to do this on a regular basis. So it's not just for one person. It'll be for a few other people. And I'll explain this afternoon how we're going to do that. And, um, and I'll only be sharing the information during that live. So people will have to watch the live to know how to be a part of it. I'm sorry if it's going to be at the wrong time for wherever you are based in the world. But when I do this, and I'll probably do it once a month, um, it'll be a two hour online mentoring session on any topic that you want help or covered. And I'll be able, to, then when I do do it once a month, I'll make sure that I do it at different times of the day so that um, no one misses out and we're not personally sort of, you know, favouring one time slot. How does that sound? Let me know what you think. How wonderful. Would be awesome from Cape Town. Yay. Thank you so much for all the live videos. So grateful. Well, these are fun for us and... Do you know, the only thing I think that's going to get us through in these times is routine, some form of routine. It doesn't have to be the exact same way that you worked before when you were doing clients, but at least keeping some form of routine will keep you, um, keep you going, keep you motivated, keep you focused and productive as well because it is easy to get caught up in everything. All right, nearly done. One more. <laughs> that looks so cool. So yeah, depending on how many hats, how many headbands you've got, and how you want to store them, there are as many things that you could use around the home. And I'm going to show you a few other things here at the moment. All right. Shay says, wow, that's so generous of you, loving all the lives, keeping my sanity. Ah, oh, thank you. All right, so, look at that. Oh, what do you want me to do? There we go. We're all cramps. Just getting excited here, people. <laughs> all righty, so if I was to hang some, um, some little headbands on here, let me just... And time, no matter, get another one. That's not in such a mess. <laughs> Here we go. So this one's already somewhat tied. So yeah, I would just come along and sort of put these in here like this. Pop a few more in. I have many headbands. And it always looks so pretty when you can color, color code them and, um, and so forth. Some great ideas on Pinterest. But just to give you an idea of them hanging up, 
that's going to look really pretty. And it's such an easy way to, un, you know, grab your, grab your favourite headband by unclamping them and keep them really neat and tidy and organised. And I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in, I'm going to sand it back lightly, make sure all the edges are smooth, and I'm going to paint it white before I attach it to the wall so it's going to look really pretty. And again, I'll show you some after photos of once I've finished that. But I love those little clips. All right. So this one here, these are just little sort of rails from Ikea. And they've got these metal clamps on them and you can buy these in packets if you jump on. These are so cheap and I'm not quite, I mean, I bought them so long ago that um, the only thing you have to be careful of is that the little sort of claw-like um, metal teeth on them, when you're using really soft knits, you do have to be careful that they don't pull the knit, the wool in them um, if you're hanging little hats and things like that on them. So popping the, the, um, the hat on like that if you don't open it wide enough and it gets caught, it can pull that wall. So you do have to be careful with these little clips. So they may be better suited to, say for example, um, your little headbands. But if you were to screw that to a wall and have all your little headbands sort of hanging on there, that would be a really great way as well. So these rails aren't designed for these clamps, but what we did, um, where's that little screwdriver? is with a little brute force, and I had Garrett and Rob help me with this one, is you can just come in and open them up a little bit. Um, if you've got a set of pliers, things like that. Garrett, I'm not, oh, there we go. I'm like, I'm not gonna get this. Um, and then you can just kind of squish them over the top there. And that is a really great rail. The other type of um, railing for that, where did I put it? I popped it down. Oh, it's just over there. This is what it does come with. And this is what I had up in my old home studio. Thank you. And I had these across. These are just the wire things that come with the, the, um, the stuff from Ikea. But yeah, I had these attached to the wall in my home studio, obviously with some little separator pieces as well. And the hooks go over. I'll get one that's not attached to another one go over the wire like that. Um, but what I found was that the wire, were, if you didn't have it pulled tight enough, it would kind of get a bit of a sag in it depending on how many hats and headbands that you had on it. The weight would sort of weigh that down. So yeah, I, um, I kind of came across these and went, these are gonna work so much better and so much neater. And I'm gonna attach those to the end of my, um, my cupboards down there to hang some hats on. And I think that's gonna look really great. So if I pull a couple of these out, just to sort of show you. You can do one pole for girls, one pole for boys. And your clients love being able to see all of this stuff as well. I always sort of say to them, I will, <laughs> now I'm a little embarrassed going through my baskets, but you know, I would say, here, have a look through this basket. I've got my boys and girls things separated. And um, if there's anything in there that you like, pull it out ha um, and I'll see if I can, we'll try to include that throughout the session. I mean, look at this. That's embarrassing. Look at that. Kelly. It is the truth though. People like that. Oh dear. You know, not perfect. <laughs> so I'm just popping a few on to kind of give you an idea of what it's going to look like. How many different shades of brown can you get? Let me turn it around. Look at that. So yeah, then you can kind of like push a bunch of them up and you can color, color code it, organize it. And that would look really great hanging on the wall as well. I love that. Yeah. And things like this, if you don't, if you're still at the beginning of your collection, um, you know, you don't have as many as what I've got, then something like this is going to work beautifully because it's not going to take up enough space. Oh, much space, sorry. But um, it'll look really good. So another thing, I'll pop this over here. 
and they're like, nice and strong. I've heard you say it before, Kelly, that only put the things on display that you like, that yeah. are your style, so it's probably a good way to... Get rid of everything that you don't use. Yeah. Okay, so I actually have here, um, you know, like a, a tube, just a cylinder that you would mail large things in. Um, and if you've got like um, a PVC pipe that's, you know, quite big like this, these are a great way to sort of um, pop some headbands and things like that on there as well because if you can't hang things on the wall, you know, you can stand something like this up and what I would do is find a piece of timber and I would create a, um, a base for this. I would secure it to a base if you had a PVC pipe or something like this and then have it standing up. You could, I suppose, run something through the centre of it and hang it like that, depending on how big it was. But um, I like the idea of having something like this standing upright. Now, I've got a little bit of calico material here. You could use just a bit of an old bed sheet or anything, really, to hessian to cover something like this. But if you were to obviously iron your material, <laughs> um, you could take the ends out. So I would roll and hot glue that on at the, I would put a line of hot glue along there and pull that nice and tight. But this is just to give you an idea, I'm not going to waste a cylinder because I'll probably have to mail someone's prints out in it one day. <laughs> and then obviously put another little bit of hot glue there. You could paint the top of that, stick that back in the top to keep that material in place like that. And then what you could do is come around with your headbands like so and tie them on. The only reason I've not done something like this is that I feel that it would take a long time to get whatever headband you needed off <laughs> and put it back on at the end. And I'm one of those, I need it now. If, it's, if I can't get the tie untie or I've, you know, I'm in a hurry, you've got a baby that's sound asleep and you think, oh, I need, I need something else here. I can add, get another variation here. But you can see by doing something like that and then you would just come all the way down and you could have that standing up. So if that's, if that's an option for you, they look really beautiful, obviously, on display in the studio. But um, for me, I want to be able to just undo or unhook something as opposed to having to tie up a bow and... I would never be able to keep something personally. You've seen the mess. I wouldn't be able to keep something like this neat and tidy. <laughs> but that's another really cool creative way just to use something that you might have laying around at home. All right. Now, my last little kind of idea that I had was um, a cork board. Not everyone's got one of these, but if, we, you know, if you can order one online or you like the idea of this, I love that this has got a frame. So if you wanted to hang something on your wall to make it a bit of a feature, make it look beautiful within your studio, which is what I'm all about, then I would use something like this because um, it's got that beautiful white frame, I've got a white studio, and I've got some little clear hooks here. So I could just pop these in and hang a, hang a headband off them, but for me, they may come out too easily. So I'm just going to take them off here. And what I'm going to do is... Ah, thank you. All right, so just measuring in the inside here, we're about 41 centimetres. So we'll come in here to about 20 and a half. So what you could do is use your, your hooks like that, but if I push that in, get it in nice and straight. Now, it's not going to come out, but I would be scared that it may, over time, loosen. So this is where I would pop a little bit of um, hot glue on the end of my hooks. So I'm just going to measure up where I'm going to put some of these. 
And we might sort of go, how many do you reckon we could put? Put. Simone says, FYI, Spotlight currently has 30% off store wide for all of those in Australia. Fantastic. Spotlight is in Australia and it's one of my favourite shops. <laughs> <laughs> Garrett and I often go to Spotlight. And uh, yeah, I'm just kind of looking here, how far in do I really want to make these? So if I just go one, two, three, and then I do another one here and here, I could, I could sort of separate it out beautifully. So if we come in about halfway there, and then we go about halfway here. What I'm gonna do here is just pop a little bit of hot glue here on my cork. Not too much, but it's just going to help. Attach that a little better. These are from a, like an office supply store, these cork boards, but you can get them, in a, I know in Australia, from places like Kmart. Uh, so yeah, you can get cork boards from pretty much everywhere. But yeah, coming along and evenly spacing those out. So now I could sort of come down a little further. And I went, what do we go in here? We went about 10, didn't we? About 10 and a quarter. So we could go. Go to about five here, come to about 15, come to about 25 there. And I am doing this so rough, people, not great. Hang on, let me get that in line. Anything that I would have hanging up in my studio with things like this on it, I would always make sure that it's going to be out of the reach of toddlers. These hurt your thumbs. Ah, oh, that's a broken one. Um, so Kate's got a question here. She's posting every day pics of newborns that she's never posted before. Oh, perfect. And sometimes receiving comments, why are you still photographing? <laughs> um, do you recommend a disclaimer or something like that? Maybe? Yeah, just pop something on there about, you know, when the photo was taken and, you know, a little story. Be real. Let people, um, I was just getting the little spider webby things off from the glue gun there. Be real, let people know, you know, I don't, I'm, while I don't have babies coming into the studio right now, I wanted to share a photo I haven't shared before. This was taken in whatever month. And, you know, what I remember the most about this particular session is, so you could do it that way. Um, but yeah, I would, I would be, you know, nice and honest with people about, um, when the photos were taken, and that just prevents any of those questions. You know, there's going to be the, the police out there, the, uh, the online police who are going to be monitoring what everyone is doing, the Good Samaritans. Um, I shared a photo yesterday, and, and I didn't disclose when it was taken, but, you know, I, I could have. So I'm just going to hang a few of these on and you could continue to work your way down and create a beautiful board with, um, with your headbands on it. I think that would be really pretty to have on display in the studio. And these boards just hang on the wall. And again, 3M hooks are fantastic, obviously, making sure that they're nice and secure.
couple more on here to give it the full effect. Trying to go with all my cream ones. One more. All right, that'll do. So yeah, you could hang your headbands up like so and create a bit of a feature out of them. I hold it down a bit. There we go. But yeah, lots of jewellery holders and things like that you could have some fun with. But just putting things like that on display would um, would really, really look beautiful. And that's the thing. I think it's it's about creating that that impact when people walk in, when they see all of your beautiful things, how you have them presented, how you, um, you know, have them on display so that they can get a little bit excited about what you can potentially use because it is like a bit of a shopping spree for them. They're coming to you to spend money and um, when they see something they love, they, they're obviously going to want you to use it, which is um, what it's all about. But yeah, this has been fun, crafting. Yay. <laughs> Um, make sure you share your ideas in the group uh, if you've got any I would love to see them I know it is hard right now with not being able to photograph babies but like we were just talking about you know grab some of the old photos that you've never shared before get them online start talking um, and engaging with your potential clients so that when you when you do get through this and when you um, come out the other side stronger and more prepared, ready to hit the ground running with your business, uh, you will be able to. So we've got someone there from Argentina. Hi. Thank you for joining me. This has been fun. It's a great start to the week. I, um, I did want to say very quickly, if, if you know, for those of you that are on here watching, there was a large post that was removed yesterday from the group by the, by the person who put the post up. And it wasn't that we, we didn't you know, um, agree with a lot of the comments or we didn't appreciate what was being said in the post. We just felt that this particular group being based on education being based on you know supporting each other as photographers was probably not the best place for a conversation around everyone's personal opinions on what is happening right now with COVID-19. So yes, we do, you know, we do want you guys to talk about the way that it is impacting your business and things like that. But when it starts becoming a little political, we start talking about presidents and prime ministers and who's doing what and, and so forth. Um, you know, that kind of loses the, the main focus of the group. And it's not that I don't want you guys discussing it. I just do want to keep the focus right here on education and on strengthening your business. That's what this is about. And if we tend to let some things go, then we're not being very consistent, especially in a very large group and a group that is has members from all over the world in it. And right now, yes, we are all being impacted on a global level by this. Unfortunately, this particular group, I don't believe is the right platform to have political statements or conversations around what is happening. But yes, if you are having issues with your business being you know, affected by what is happening right now, communicate, talk to us in here, let us help you, let, let us help each other to get through this. But, you know, I do want to, to sort of separate those, those conversations in terms of how it's obviously impacting your business and obviously um, how it, you know, it's not really a, a business conversation that we're having in here in terms of the, uh, the, the different levels of politics that are, that are going on out there right now. And it is different. And I think this is where we have to be very compassionate for each other. All over the world, we are all going to face very different situations, very different restrictions, and we all have different opinions. We have to know that and we have to appreciate that. Um, <laughs> and that's the thing. There is so much going on out there all over the world. I've just read a comment. Someone comes here to escape it. And you know what? I do too. And I need to do that. Yes, I need to know what's going on in the world right now. And I do. 
uh, but I make sure that I limit my attention and I only focus on the information that I know that is going to be you know, um, true and correct, well, as true and correct as it can be as well. So I fo only follow, you know, certain um, channels. I only listen to certain places where I know I'm going to get um, the information that I need to stay up to date. But we don't want to be focusing on it 24 seven. If you do start reading, you know, um, comments and posts and getting involved in all of that, that can, that can start to have a negative impact and effect on you. We want to keep you motivated, we want to keep you positive and we want to keep you focused on how you can get through this. I also want to say for every single member of this group that is working in some capacity on the front lines in terms of whether you are a health healthcare worker, provider, whether you are even a cleaner in a hospital or all of those different things, what you are doing to help us get through this um, is definitely not going unnoticed. We appreciate you and we thank you uh, for us here in in the studio, you know, we are taking every single precaution we possibly can to keep ourselves stay safe. When I say stay home, stay safe, you know, Garrett and I, we obviously don't live together. He's currently two to three metres away from me, but we do come into close contact. But I also know that when Garrett goes home, he goes home. When I go home, I go home. The two of us, we are basically live together, <laughs> you could say. <laughs> The only time we don't see each other is when we go to bed. And, um, and that's what it's about. It's about, you know, we, we are obviously taking a risk coming here and here, but we get into our car and we drive to work. I'm 10 minutes away. And I come here so that we can do this for you. We can give you something to give you hope, something to keep you motivated, inspired, and, and focused on your business and on you as a person as well. It's not just about, you know, coming out of this with a business. And I know many of you will be going, yep, well, my business is gone. Maybe for right now in terms of not shooting, but what is it that you want? Do you want to come out of this stronger? Do you want to have a business when all of this is over? And I know a lot of reports at the moment are saying that it might not be over for a very long period of time. That's okay, it is going to affect all of us. We are living with a lot of change right now and we will have to change the way that we think, the way that we, we do things. We cannot change what is happening right now but we can change and we can control the way we deal with it and the way that we move forward. So it's all about putting yourself into a positive mind space and staying focused on what it is that you want, setting those goals for yourself and every day just creating a task and working and, and moving towards that goal, you know, one step at a time because that's what being a business owner is about. Often we feel like it is literally one step forward, two steps back, but we want to be two steps forward, one step back. And we've got to stay you know, focused on that. But the thing is, you can't expect to see results and get, um, you know, and reach your plans or your goals or whatever it is if you don't do the work. So right now, we're focused on everything that we want to achieve when we come out of this because it is impacting our business as well. So we are focusing very much so right now on how we can um, you know, create better systems and structures within our business to make it stronger when we do get through this as well. You know, how are we going to keep our studio? That's something that we ask ourselves every day. So what can we do right now? What, what, what ideas can we come up with? And this is the thing, we as human beings have the ability to evolve and change. We have throughout all of time and we've got to remember that so we will get through it we just need to support each other and be there as um, you know that that strong community to see each other get through it but like I said when we when we are seeing posts in the group if they are not focused on business if they are not focused on education in terms of your business then we may not see them as as something that should be shared here right now so let's try and keep it all positive let's support each other let's remember the rules of the group if you are a new member please go to the group files and read those for all of the previous videos you can find them under the announcements tab you can find them under the videos tab Go and check all of those things out. I can tell you there is a wealth of information and knowledge shared in all of those videos and documents. Um, again, I'm gonna be back here later 
today, I'm going to share some exciting news. Like I said, I'm going to give away a two hour online mentoring session to a member of the group. So I'll share the information live on how you can be a part of that. And I'm going to do that once a month, um, at least for the next six months. So that'll be lots of fun. And uh, yeah, I'll be back to share it with you soon. So yeah, have a good day. Good night for those of you who are going to bed. Um, but I'll see you again very soon. Take care.